J ハット塾。For this problem, it would be relevant to review prime numbers and the factorization of quadratic expressions. Here I rephrase the given. It says that there exist numbers n and p such that the following hold. First, we are told that n is a natural number. So that's the numbers. Those are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Those are basically the positive integers. Then we are also told that p is greater than 0 and that p is prime. So that means p is also a positive integer, but at the same time, it's also prime. Okay, Prime numbers are those that that are not factorable. That means that their only factors are one and itself. So in this case, the factors of p would be one and p. So those are the only and only two factors of p because it's prime. And finally, we are given the relationship between n and p. We are told that uh, p and n satisfy this quadratic equation. Now, the question is, what is the value of p? To do this, again, we recall that a prime number is any positive integer, or sometimes there are negative prime numbers. So we can also consider that if, uh, depending on the situation. But in this case, we are specifically told that p is a positive number and that it is prime. And we recall that. A prime number has only two factors. That's one and the number itself, in this case, p. Now, when we have recalled that, when we realize that, what we can do is we factor equation 57. So this one, right? We factor this. And then we know it's quadratic, so there will be two linear factors there. And what we'll do is we'll assign each of the factors to each of the factors of p. Remember, the factors of p are 1 and p. So each of the factors of equation 27, or rather expression 57, that is on the right, the factors of those would, would have to be equated with 1 and p as well. So let's do that. The factors of 57, equation 57, are n minus 7 and n minus 11. So you can try to figure out that yourself. And now, if you're convinced with that, we can go to the next step. And that is, we assign the factors of p, which are 1 and p, to each of those factors of the right side, the right hand side of 57. Those are n minus 7 and n minus 11. Now, because there are two factors of p, 1 and p, and there are two factors of this expression here, there are two ways to assign the numbers to these factors. So either we assign 1 to n minus 7, and consequently p to n minus 11, or we can do the other way around. We can assign 1 to n minus 11, and then we can assign p to n minus 7. Those are two possible cases, and we'll try to do both. Okay. So first, let's assign 1 to n minus 7, and p to n minus 11. If we do the first one, 1 equals n minus 7, we see that n equals 8, right? We just move the 7 to the other side. And now, because we know the value of n, we can get the value of p from this one, right? And so p equals n minus 11 from here. We replace n with 8, and we get p equals minus 3. Now, this is not a solution, because we are told here that p is positive. And so we ignore this case. We don't, we don't actually use this case. This, this is not the solution, OK? So we're just going to say we, we are not looking at this case, OK? This is not the solution. So probably the second case, the only other case, is the solution, OK? Which is the case when p equals n minus 7 and 1 equals n minus 11. So let's solve the first one. If, n, if, if 1 equals n minus 11, then we have n equals 12, right? And we plug that in here, we get 
P equals 12 minus seven, which is which gives us P equals five. And very easily, you can plug in these two values of P and N in here, and you will see that this equation 57 holds when P is five and N equals 12, okay? And what that tells us is that this is our solution, P equals five. And this is what the problem is looking for.